All right, Genesis, uh, Revelation chapter 3. Amen? Amen. Revelation chapter 3. We start from this one. Excuse me. To verse 6. Joshua. Uh, to the angel of the church in Sardis, write. These are the words of him who holds the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your deeds. You have a reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Do you, do you mind to read? Yes. Uh, verse 2. Wake up, strengthen what remains, remains and is about to die. Why have found your deeds unfinished in the sight of my God? Remember therefore what you have received and heard. Hold it fast and repent. But if you do not wake up, I will come like a thief, and you will not know at what time I will come to you. Yet you have a few people in Sardis who, who have not soiled their clothes. They will walk with me, dressed in white, for they are worthy. The one who is victorious will, like them, be dressed in white. Oh, sorry, continue, please. Read. The one who is victorious will, like them, be dressed in white. Mm -hmm. I'll never blot out the name of that person from the book of life, mm -hmm. but will acknowledge that name before my Father and his angels. Mm -hmm. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the, to the churches. Amen. So, uh, this is where we are now, in our study of Genesis, I mean Revelation, <laughs> the book of Revelation. And uh, we, last time we talked about Reve Revelation chapter 3, uh, we, we realize, we see clearly that the Lord is addressing the church in Sardis, and He is saying, He's bringing out something very important. He's saying, the church in Sardis is a dead church. Oh, that's very powerful. And so we ask the question, why is this church dead? That's the question, yeah? What happened? We found out that having understood this principle from the beginning, that when the Lord spoke to the Apostle John, this prophet, he first gave him a revelation. He said, heaven was open. And then he said, come up here. And then he went up. And then when he was taken up, then he saw. What he saw astounded him, of course. But then he heard the voice that said, everything that you see and everything that you hear, you must write it down. Then we begin to understand that from the things that he saw and heard, from these came the message, the instruction to each church that the Lord wanted to address. Okay? So, he picks an element from the revelation. This element re contains the instruction to the church. And embedded therein, in this instruction, is the rebuke to this church, the encouragement to this church, the promise to this church, and even uh, the command to repent. Amen? Mm -hmm. And so, so for you now, that means for you to understand the message he is speaking to the church, you must look at how he introduced each letter. The way he introduces each letter, that gives you the whole message already to this church. And so when we look at the church in Smyrna, we understand that this church is dead because the one who is addressing this church or the element that he wrote, he decided to choose is of the seven spirits of God. Now, in the book, in the chapter 1, the apostle did not reference the seven spirits of God or did not quote, he did not uh, write down the seven spirits of God that he saw. But in chapter 4, 
he reveals to us that he indeed saw the seven, the sevenfold spirit of God. Amen. When the Lamb of God appeared, and when the Lamb of God appeared, he had seven horns. And, the, and it says, these are the sevenfold spirits of God. I hope I'm, I'm, I'm right there. No? So in chapter 4, it says, uh, he's the what? The seven spirits of God. In front of the throne, seven lips. No, not the horns, but the, the burning. Sorry, sorry, sorry. said, around the throne were seven, that's verse 5 of chapter 4, says, in front of the throne, seven lamps were blazing. These are the seven spirits of God. Amen? So, he's saying, the seven spirit of God. Now, in chapter 3, he says, the one who holds the sevenfold spirit of God is addressing the church in Smyrna. So that we understand. Now, what about the seven spirit of God reveals to us that the church in Smyrna is dead? It is the fact that the Holy Spirit is the one that gives life. He is the life-giving Spirit of God. So if he that holds the Spirit of, seven Spirit of God is to address the church in Smyrna that she is dead, then that means this church does not have the Holy Spirit. Investigating further, we understood that this church is dead because the Holy Spirit left. Because you cannot be the church of Christ except you have received his spirit. The book of uh, Romans, is it Romans chapter 8 says, it says, he that has a spirit, he says, the spirit testifies with our spirits that we are the children of God. Amen? It says those that are filled with the Holy Spirit, they are the children of God. So then that means for these people to be called children of God, it means that they have at a certain point in their lives received the Holy Spirit. That's why they are now holding this position as a church. But something happened. If they are dead now without the Holy Spirit, that means the Holy Spirit left at some point. And if the Holy Spirit had left at some point in their Christianity, then that means these guys, they were doing this, they were filled with the Holy Spirit, and then a time came when the Holy Spirit left, but they <coughs> excuse me, but they continued <coughs> thinking they had the Holy Spirit, but he was dead. How do I know? Because, I know because, when you look at this chapter, at this letter, it's as if you hear him say, breaking news. Smyrna, you are dead. It's as if they didn't even know they were dead. He says, I know your work. You have a reputation of being alive. You see that? So they have a reputation. That means they even walked in a deception thinking they are alive. So, so then, this brings out a lot of things. That. These guys were walking in their Christianity with the Holy Spirit. And then at one point, he left. Then they continued without him. Yet, they were thinking still that they were filled with him. Meaning, they didn't even know he left. And when he left, not knowing that he left, they continued practicing their Christianity and attributing their works to the working of the Holy Spirit, yet he was not there. Meaning, they were deceived in thinking that he was still with them, when in fact, he was no longer with them. They were deceived. Then the question became, who deceived them? You see that? Step by step. The Holy Spirit was there, and then he left. They didn't know. They continued thinking, because they you have an image. You, so they have a certain, they have, they have really, they have really exhibited themselves in a certain way that makes people around them think and be convinced that they are indeed walking in the leading of the Holy Spirit. And they also convince themselves, or they were convinced that they truly believed, they also believed that, yeah, we are filled with the Holy Spirit. Whatever we are doing is of God. And people around them took that, and they said, indeed, you are walking with the Holy Spirit. But then, the Lord comes and says, no! You are not filled with the Holy Spirit. Breaking news. Yeah? So we see that. 
then someone deceived them because if the Holy Spirit is in you, yeah, he says, he will teach you. But it looks like something even went wrong that when he left, they didn't even know. This must have been a, a, a very serious issue that took place. Because he says to the church in Smyrna, he says, you have a reputation of being alive. I know your deeds. So, he's saying, they have exhibited some works. In their Christianity, they have practiced their Christianity in a certain way. Doing some things. And in doing those things, two things came out. Number one, these things they have done gave a message to the world gave a certain certain image you know you know when you have, when people try to appear to have a certain image so it's to, to, to appear as if you are something that you are really not even if you are trying to con to convince yourself that you are something no? say so they carry themselves they, they put up a certain advertisement they put up a certain image you can almost say it's as if you can, you can, you can it's as if you hear me say you put on some makeup to make people think you are something that you really aren't. <laughs> is it because makeup these days now are you really use is a really perfect example here because someone can really put on a makeup and when they put on this makeup you look at them today with the makeup and you look at them tomorrow without the makeup and say ah is this the same person or what? <laughs> no? It can almost confuse you. In fact, they put on a makeup and they look totally different <laughs> because of the shame. Amen. But now here, they put on a certain face. They painted themselves in a certain way. They put on some works that gave a certain image. He says, but these works really prove in the eyes of heaven these works really prove that they were dead. But there's also something that comes out of this message, which is this, that their works that gave a false impression to those that surrounded them, these works must have been involved in chasing the Holy Spirit from their lives. Because if you are filled with the Holy Spirit and you are walking in the power of the Holy Spirit and you are walking in such an intimate walk with the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit will not just one day say, I think I've been with Julius for 20 years, it's, it's enough, let me go. <laughs> Holy Spirit doesn't do that. He doesn't say, I think, I, I think I've been with you too long enough. Now you can deal with, now you can live your own life yourself. He doesn't do that. Holy Spirit does not just decide to leave you because you are grown up. <laughs> yeah? Like guardians. Eh? So you, you can only have a guardian until 21 years. And then after that, you can do your own signatures. <laughs> no, no. That's not what he does. For him to leave, L-E-V-E, L-E-A-V-E, -E, eh? for him to leave you means that you have done something that has displeased him. Amen? Amen? He comes in you through faith when you believe. But for him to live, for him to live, look, this is our best friend that has been given to us, to aid us, to speak for us, to advocate for us, to defend us, to lead us, to teach us, to reveal Jesus to us, to reveal the mind of Christ to us, to help us walk in this way of holiness, to help us walk in righteousness. He has been given to us as the most precious gift of God to do a very powerful work in the life of a Christian, to help you to, to, to be the true image bearer of Christ. He's been he's such a precious outpouring of God the Father and the Son. 
He says, if you have the Holy Spirit, that truly proves your sonship. And he says, if you have the Holy Spirit, then you really begin to worship God as he should be worshipped. Because he says, a time is coming when those that will worship the Father in truth and in spirit, when he says those that will worship the Father will worship him in truth and in spirit. And this is only through the working of the Holy Spirit. Without him, you cannot exhibit love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, eh, gentleness, and even self-control. Forget. Sin will be your companion all the days of your life. He's really been given. He's so powerful that without him, you cannot live the Christian life. You cannot live the Christian life. You cannot continue this work without him. You see, he's very important. He's the one that heals us. He's the one that delivers us. He's the one that separates us from sin. So for him to live your life is such a tragedy. And it's not something he does for fun. That means for him to live means he has really been provoked in a very bad way. That this Christian has really decided to go beyond the boundaries, to really do some things that, that provoked the Holy Spirit to live. Because you see, he is very sensitive. The Holy Spirit is sensitive. He does not dwell with sin. That's why the first thing he does in your life when you come there, when he comes in, he says, separation, separation, separation from sin. That's why you find him. He really names, he makes sure that he reveals to you what is sin, what is righteousness. He makes everything plain so that he aids you to make the right choice, to always choose right. In the book of 1 Thessalonians, because we now want to understand, why did he leave this church? Why did he leave the Thessalonians? He's such a precious Holy Spirit. Such a precious companion. We cannot afford to lose him. And he, he doesn't, you know, he doesn't play games with us to say, oh, let me leave you and see how you manage on your own. No. First Thessalonians chapter 5. The apostle says, this is chapter 5. Chapter 5. The apostle says. Can you read verse 19? Do not Don't. quench the spirit. Ah! Do not quench the spirit. Do not quench, suppress, or subdue the Holy Spirit. He's giving a warning. He says. Do not quench the spirit. What does it mean to quench? Suppress, yeah? The Amplified says, do not suppress or subdue. Wait, let me check in the, 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 the Good News Bible and the, in God's Word, just the, uh, and then, and then and we see. What does that mean? That? Good, news. Good news. Yeah, no, I have. Oh. I think I can read it for you. You can look for it. Okay, Do not restrain the Holy Spirit. Do not restrain the Holy Spirit. That's verse 19, yeah? <laughs> now, what does it mean to restrain? God's word says, do not put out God's Spirit. Da. Hi. Hello. The, 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 the Phillips Bible says, Never damp the fire of the Spirit and never despise what is spoken in the name of the Lord. There is a scripture, I don't know who remembers this, it says, Do not grieve. What do I say? It's, it's just a, a screwdriver. It says, Do you remember this? It says, uh, where is it sitting far away? Is it somewhere here at least? Uh -huh. let, let me see where, where, where this one is. It says, Do not grieve. Aha. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 25 and verse 30. Okay? Because the, the apostles, what this shows us is that there is. In our, Christ, in our Christianity, we should not be ignorant. That's the word. Ignorant. It says, don't be ignorant of the fact that 
you can grieve the Holy Spirit. That you can, he says, quench the fire of the Holy Spirit. Restrain the Holy Spirit. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. 25 and 30. Can you read it? Can you read 24, 25? And then you read verse 30. Okay. Uh, sister, blessings will read 25. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor, for we are all members of one body. Ah, is that verse 25? Or? Mm -hmm. Is that? Ah, 24 maybe. Ah, okay, 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 okay. Okay, okay, I understand, I see, I see, I see. Verse 30, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Oh, oh. Do not what? Grieve. grieve the Holy Spirit of God. Now he's talking about grieving. Now this gives us a picture that for the Holy Spirit to leave, then he must have been grieved. What makes the Holy Spirit to grieve? What does it mean to grieve, by the way? What do you understand? Um. When, when someone is caught caught by grief, or someone is, 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 is grieving, or someone has grief, what does that mean? Deep sadness. Sadness, yes. What else? It says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. The, the, the King James says, do not grieve. New American Standard Bible, do not grieve. Amplified. It says, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. Do not offend or vex or sadden him. We'll continue there next time. What are those things? Because it says, I know your deeds. And I know that you have put up a certain image. You have put up a certain, uh, what's the word? Uh, 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 you, you have exhibited yourself in a certain way that people have a certain image of you. You have an image of being alive. But you are really dead. Then that is connected to the deeds they have done. And we, we see here, he says, don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Don't sadden him. Don't vex him. Don't offend him. What are those things that can offend the Holy Spirit to the point where he even decides to leave now? Because when he leaves, now you hear him say, I abandon you. He's abandoning because you have vexed him. We say he doesn't do it for fun. For him to leave, he must have been grieved. We know, next, as we continue next time, that if he's grieved, then in that equation of offense must have been something that we call sin. Yeah. They must have sinned for them to grieve him. Now, sin is a broad term, isn't it? What is sin? And what are those sins that grieve the Holy Spirit? Oh, that's, that's very dangerous, eh? To grieve him. It's like you, 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 you have such a close friend, you know close friends? They walk together, inseparable. And then one day you hear, they are no longer talking. Yeah? Would you say, I ah, know, they, they always do that. No, you, you stop and think. You see, you, you really, you know, uh, lean back a little bit and say, what? They are no longer talking. What happened? You really want to know. A and B were such powerful friends since primary school until high school, until they went to Polytech, yeah? and then they went to, to Moscow to study medicine together. They even had academia through that. And then after all those how many years, they are not talking. I say, yeah? I've known these guys since I grew up. Since I was growing up, eh? Since I grew up. <laughs> since I was growing up. Now you are telling me they have separated. What happened? That's the question. Yeah. Such close friends. They've been together. Through thick and thin. Eh? Inseparable. But today I hear, eh? A and B are no longer together. What happened? Yeah, that's really a question that comes to mind. What happened? Who did what? Yes. 
The same in our walk with the Holy Spirit. Who did what? And you know, it is, it is already a fact that it cannot be the fault of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> that, that is unquestionable. No, it is not the fault of the Holy Spirit. It is not his fault. He is not man. He is perfect. He is holy. He is righteous. He is never at fault. Never, never. If there is something wrong in your relationship with the Holy Spirit, then the fault is with you. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the way you are speaking to us. Lord, lead us to repentance. Lord, we repent for any sin in our lives. And keep us away from those things, those sins, those deeds, Lord, that destroy our relationship with the Holy Spirit. Lord, don't take your Holy Spirit away from us. Please, Lord, keep him close to us, to teach us, correct us, rebuke us from our sins, Lord. If our hearts are desiring after other things, oh Lord, Father, turn us away from those things. Turn us away from sin, that we may always be pleasing unto you, Holy Spirit, that our walk may be pleasing unto you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen.